Oh yes, this is the Hardcore Marketing Show. I'm Casey Cheshire, your host for this epic journey. Today's show is sponsored by Ringmaster on a mission to launch B2B podcasts that create relationships, generate revenue, and drive growth. Ringmasterlive.com. Bam. All right, there we go. We hit the button. The adventure has begun today. I'm so excited to introduce my guest. He is a serial entrepreneur, a marketing leader and thought leader, an investor and advisor. He's all about helping the SaaS companies figure out authority. We're going to talk a lot about authority, talk a lot about SEO and all things organic today. Co-founder and CEO at USERP, Jeremy Moser. Welcome to the show, sir. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me, Casey. Casey. Hell yeah, dude. I'm excited to have you here. I can't wait to roll the sleeves. I've already rolled up the sleeves. I got the coffee, <laughs> got some cold brew. I got multiple cups of coffee around me. Nice. You know how that goes? Yeah. So I'm ready to get into this thing and I'm going to pass you this. It's heavy. So one sec. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Take Thor's hammer. Awesome. I got Grab it. it. All right. You got it? Yep. All yep. Right. I got there, it. There it goes. All right. Hey, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't see the video, one handed grab of Thor's hammer. Yep. If uh, Thor Been wasn't working out a little bit just yeah. now, this was it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Jeremy, take Thor's hammer and smash for me some kind of marketing myth, bogus strategy, misconception, set the record straight once and for all. Yeah, for sure. I think one of the biggest marketing myths, and I mean, being personally in the SEO space, I'll kind of lean towards that SEO side of things. I think one of the biggest kind of bogus myths that we see is that SEO takes 12 months to show results. I think it's really the common talking point that we see all over the place, right? Of like, you know, don't invest in SEO, it takes too long, or you're going to have to spend 12 months without seeing any sort of traction or results. And now just from personal experience, working with hundreds and hundreds of clients at this point, both big and small, it's just simply not true, right? Even if you are a new brand, even if you're starting from scratch with, you know, just a basic website in the competitive space, you can see results relatively quickly. It really just depends on how you create and you get with the SEO strategy that you have and what you make of your current situation there. So for example, I'll just give a kind of like, you know, a brief overview of some case studies and stuff that we've done. So we worked with a company called Early Bird. They're a fintech solution for consumer markets. So they basically help you invest in children, set up 529 accounts, things like that. Uh, Hyper competitive space, fintech, consumer based, going up against some really big fish like NerdWallet, Bankrate, Fidelity, all these kind of major brands, right, that are institutions that have been around for decades. Um, and we were able to drive some really significant results for them within the first three, four months, moving up to that six plus month mark. So we're talking, you know, now they're doing upwards of 100,000 unique visits per month. Uh, by the time wow. we hit that six month mark with them, they were doing, I think, around 30 to 40K recurring visits per month in a really difficult competitive okay. consumer space. And that was from, you know, literally baseline scratch. They, when it came to us, they didn't even have a blog set up. Um, so brand new to the SEO game seeing massive gains within that three to six month time frame. And we've seen that for a bunch of other clients too, where even in one to two month time frames, if they're a small company, they've got an interesting niche to be in. We can find ways to get created by essentially finding what are those search volumes or keywords that folks just aren't focusing on right now? Like where is their unique opportunity and how do we fit that in with their unique brand? And so I think that that myth is just that, you know, it's pervasive in the space. You've probably heard of it. Anyone listening here has probably heard of it. But uh, in context and in practice, we just find that it's not true. It's not true. Okay. And this is a good thing for SEO because I think sometimes the, the hesitancy to get into it is, man, I need results right now, right? It's that, that JG Wentworth commercial, right? <laughs> I want my cash money now. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So, yeah, a little shout out to JG Wentworth, future sponsor of the show. Uh, but so this is good. But it makes me wonder why then, where does this come from? Why do people say that it takes so long? Yeah, it's a good question. I think people say that it takes long because they have a little bit of mixed expectations going into it. And also it's, it falls on part on, on SEO agencies as a whole, right? Of wanting to sell things for the long term. You know, it's really convenient to say, hey, this SEO plan is going to take you two years. Let's sign you up. Now they've got a client for two years. So it's obviously some fault on the SEO agencies themselves. And then also on on just folks that are looking to get into it with kind of misaligned expectations. So well, folks that often invest in SEO, they probably start somewhere around like paid advertising, right? Where they're seeing results really, really quick. They're spinning up some campaigns. They're putting money in. They're seeing those conversion fleets come through. It's just not the same with SEO. There is a little bit of a ramp up time there, right? Especially if you're brand new. 
you're not going to see results within a week of publishing your first piece of content. It's going to take you at least a month or two to get that ball rolling, but you should start to see yeah. results pretty quickly beyond that. And it really comes down to figuring out what are those keywords that you actually realistically can target and building a strategy around those. Because we all want to rank for those, you know, glory firms that are, you know, like directly related to our business, but those might be ones that are going to be really competitive and they might take a little bit more time. So you can find ones that are a little more specific, a little more long tail, maybe catering towards different audience styles. You can see results much faster. So I think it's a combination of those two. Okay. It, you know, I guess my other thought is too, it, not only are they trying to get a longer contract with you, man, the number of SEO agencies that I can trust is probably less than a full yeah set of fingers on one hand sure. and you're you're and you're included in that list because i already like what you're talking about on this podcast so it, my other thought was it's these people just just saying that oh well you know we don't get you results so just keep waiting keep right. waiting we'll get you results one day keep waiting yep. and i think there's so much mistrust of the seo world why is that what why does it seem like there's so many snake oil salesmen and and women in the uh in the seo biz yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to pinpoint exactly kind of how that started or how it, it uh, you know evolved to where it is. I think it's just one of those business models that tends to be a low cost to start up. And so I think there's a low barrier to entry there where a lot of folks who are not super experienced can kind of come in and say, OK, you know, I, I did SEO for a year or two at this company. Let me start my own thing. Let me uh, sell these services. And then folks tend to over promise and under deliver. And I think that's pervasive in a lot of just like not even SEO in, in particular, right? But in, in most kind of service-based agency style businesses, we see that being pretty pervasive. Um, so I think it's, it's uh, you know, it's unfortunate for the broader scale of SEO. It's uh, more fortunate for us because we've taken an opposite approach there where a lot of folks that come to us, they've spent a lot of time and a lot of money, unfortunately, on, on agencies that just haven't delivered. And so it plays in our favor in that, like we're, we can be very selective on who we take on and, and we know we're going to be able to get them results for the long term. So I think it really creates a win-win situation for you know our clients, but obviously ourselves too, and, and hopefully restores a little bit of good faith in uh, the SEO community as a whole. Yeah, I totally see that being the case, and and having you come on a pod like this and and share like the the real deal, um, I think makes a big difference. People get to hear the the good side of SEO. So. I want those one to two month results. I want those even three to six. I'll take. How do I need to approach this in order to get those? Like, what what do I need to do right? Yeah, absolutely. I think what you need to do right from the beginning is really solidify content strategy that targets your ICP very early on, and then avoid those stages of like throwing spaghetti at the wall. So a lot of folks, when they jump into SEO, they hear things like, "I just need to publish content ASAP. I need more content on my site." But a lot of it's disjointed, right? It's not. Uh, cohesive, there's no real strategy behind it of what you're targeting and the why and what the realistic payback period in terms of the time to get an ROI from that effort. And so what we see then is folks, again, with those misaligned expectations of, okay, they know they need to rank for, let's say, social media scheduling or something for their, their startup. But, you know, folks yeah. like HubSpot are ranking for social media scheduling, right? So if you're just going to go publish an article about that, it's going to take you maybe a year or two years to rank or something like that, whereas you can go a little bit more long tail. Yeah maybe a little more specific, look for stuff that's a little more unique and sort of start building a content strategy around that to where you have a realistic chance of ranking for that relatively quickly. I think that's the biggest thing that, that folks struggle with when they're jumping into SEO is that there's always those shiny objects of those, you know, high volume search terms that everyone sees. Those are also the ones that everyone goes after and the one that everyone covets. And those are tend to be a little bit more of a long term play. So you need to weigh in that payback period of how long are you comfortable going without seeing a return on investment really dictates what sort of keywords you target within your strategy there. So if I want to go super psycho and go, I want to get a result in as short a time as possible. Like even if you had like an SEO competition, we had all these folks competing and you're like, get me, you know, get me a lead in the shortest period of time. What would you do? To win that competition yeah absolutely if, uh, let's just say they're for context let's just maybe say they're a brand new company they don't have much going on on their site they want to get results pretty right. quickly there i'd say you're actually yeah. your biggest benefit from seo tends to be the off page side of things so the link building ends so actually not even publishing I, i'd still recommend obviously publishing content on your own site but the results you might see faster are actually from off page seo and what i mean by that is like 
if you're a brand new company, you're going to publish a post, it's going to take you a couple of weeks for that post to actually index, start to rank, et cetera. Whereas if you're doing the off page side of things, let's just say you're a social media scheduling tool to keep it consistent here. There's a lot of people already writing articles about social media scheduling. How do you do it? What's the best time? What are the best tools to use? Right. Those are opportunities for you to basically capitalize on their traffic quicker. So what I mean by that is going and researching who's publishing that content, who's willing to link to you there, building a good relationship with that content manager or producer, and getting yourself listed on one of those articles. You can immediately drive some really high quality referral traffic that's already looking, already searching, already clicking on that content. That's usually going to be your biggest bang for your buck early on in SEO is getting those off-page wins where you're capitalizing on the traffic of other major brands versus kind of that waiting period that it typically takes in the first couple of weeks or a month or two to see your own content rank. So we typically recommend that if you're looking for really quick leads. You know, off, off page, just like when I think about backlinks, now everything I think is not accurate, which is why I do a podcast so I can learn the difference. But in my mind, I immediately go to offshore companies that are creating fake pages that are sending links your way and then google and their almighty powers know that you're just gaming the system and they're penalizing you and you're just losing out on this so what does it mean to really do backlinks the right way yeah it's a great question really what we're talking about here is how do we get links from brands that are actually established ones that we know and recognize ones that have legitimate traffic and are actually going to impact your business for the better and not the worse and so that means looking at ones that are, you know, real brands that have been around for a long time. They have real organic traffic coming through. They've got a good quality sites. So this is ones that you want to do research for that basically are ranking for similar terms that you're, you're looking to kind of capitalize on, but that aren't directly competitive to you. So for example, if you're going that social media scheduling route, there's a couple sites that are like, you know, broader or tech focused and maybe they're covering it. They're covering those topics at large. Those are ones that you want to target from a link building perspective because clearly they're valuable in the eyes of Google, right? They're ranking well for that term already. They've got some traffic coming through. Those are the ones you want to prioritize and not ones where, you know, you shoot them an email and they immediately come back and say, cool, that'll be, you know, 200 bucks to place a link. Those are, you know, the typical ones that you'll hear from where they're going to charge you. Those are ones that, you know, if you can buy your way on from a nominal fee, uh, so can your competitors, and you can be sure that Google's probably aware of that too, right? So those are ones you typically want to avoid right. in favor of ones that are just legitimate brands, legitimate companies that are actually worthwhile targeting. Those tend to be our main focus like, with the pay. clients we work with. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, if you're doing this organically, don't pay for any directly from a given site. Um, you know, obviously you can still contract with an agency that can do this for you, but just be sure if you are that they're not paying given sites and they're not just acting as like a middleman, so to speak, where like you're going to them, they're just paying a site 50 bucks and then they're upcharging you 150 bucks, whatever it is. You want st uh, companies that are actually going to do the real hard work to secure some of these links. And that means right. building good relationships with publishers, writing really good quality content that gets picked up by them, going through those hard editorial processes that take a lot of time, a lot of effort, good quality writers doing it the right way from the start so that you don't run the risk of those penalties long term. Can you can you zero in on that part you just talked about? It's like like the the art of link building. And you mentioned the building good relationships, writing good content. It it this is a, a new world to me. So talk to me start at the relationship. Where what kind of relationship do you build with these sites? Yeah, absolutely. The The biggest key to building these relationships long term is how do you provide some sort of mutual value exchange? And that a lot of what you'll see in kind of link building outreach today, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this have probably seen it in their own inbox, uh, is, is most folks will come to you and say, hey, you wrote a cool article here. Uh, can you add my link here, X, Y, Z in this position? You know, that's you're, you're basically asking someone to do you a favor without any sort of value given in return. There's realistically no scenario for that publisher to where adding your link provides them any sort of value. It's realistically a one-way street. And so I think what you need to do is flip that script on its head and really go into it with a, a giving mindset first. And like, how do I help this brand uh, get more exposure in front of a, their target audience or reach new audiences as a whole? And that could be like, you know, going into that relationship and saying, hey, I've got a cool email list. It's got 10, 20,000, whatever, how many people on it? Even if it's small and it's targeted, going to them and saying, hey, I can promote your guys' product here. Like maybe there's some sort of mutual collaboration we can do to get in, in front of each other's audiences. 
get a little more traction there? What's some sort of value you can lead with upfront to where you're building that relationship, you're showing good faith, you're not just coming into it and saying, hey, I need a link on your site because you know we all need links on everyone's sites, but that's just not how it works, right? We wanna lead with, with value before we ask for anything in return and that's really gonna drive the best results for you. And so for, for them, you're trying to create this content that can help them get more traffic. Yep. Yeah, in exactly. In exchange for them just linking back to you. Yeah, exactly. It, it's kind of that value okay. proposition pitch that we use of like, hey, here's, you know, I'll give you a, a good example of sort of a template that we use that, you know, someone listening can kind of take and run with is that when you're researching, say, you might, you might find a site and say, cool, this would be a really good one for me to get a link from. How do I go about actually yeah. doing that now? What we like to do there is basically run what's called a content gap analysis. So we'll take that site and then we'll plug it into, you know, various different tools, whether it's HRF, SEMrush, any of those tools work just fine. You could plug it in there and run basically a content gap analysis that says, okay, this current site that I'm targeting, I want to get a link from, here's their co competition, their top competitors organically, and what uh, keywords that they're currently missing. So it'll basically show you that gap between the site that you're analyzing and its competitors. And then you can use that information as leverage right to your email. You can go to them and say, hey, I did a lot of this analysis and research for you. I found that you guys aren't currently writing about XYZ topic. I'll write that article for you. You know, normally you'd have to pay a really good freelancer to write this. That would cost you maybe a thousand bucks, maybe more, depending on how long it is. I'll write it for you. You know, I'll do all the work, make sure there's very minimal edits for you. If you guys like it, you can publish it. There will be a link back in there to maybe something that I'm talking about on my own sites. And then that's that mutual value exchange that you get. We find that's super successful when you do that because, again, you're saving them a lot of time, a lot of effort and money in the process, and you're giving them something of value versus kind of just saying, hey, place my link on this existing article of yours, and uh, you know, they're, they're not getting any value out of that. Yeah. Help me out for no reason other than to help me out. <laughs> right. It's like, go away. It's like what yeah. most spam is on LinkedIn. Yep, you know? exactly. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, dude, I do. I like that a lot. I, in, by the way, one of the best things you can do to LinkedIn spammers is just is just pitch them back your own stuff. You know, <laughs> that's like, a good hey, one. Yeah, this, yeah. this cold out outreach not really working too well. Consider some backlinks from you know, or consider launching your own podcast. I might <laughs> do just a little bit better than this strategy you've got right here. Yeah, the reverse pitch. I like that one. I'm gonna take that. Yeah. yeah. And then then I was like, hey, are you we gonna hop on a call? You wanna get on a call? They're like, what are you talking about? I, yeah, I want to get on a call with you. I'm like, yeah, but it'll be my call to get on. Yeah. yeah so you just confuse them. They don't know what's going on. A uh, little bit of justice in the world. Yeah. So the anything around the content that you write for them, we have some keywords we want to put in there. We want to provide some value. Anything else we should really think about? Yeah, I think from the content perspective, when you're writing it for a given site there, really think about how you can make that as product-led as you can. So that that piece is more valuable to them and really doing your time in the research process helps here of like when you're when you're doing that content gap analysis and you're finding keywords don't just kind of take the first one and run with it really think for a few minutes about how does this keyword potentially impact their business is it going to be valuable for them to rank for because that's another aspect of it right if you pitch uh, a given site and you say hey there's this cool article i can write if it's not relevant if it doesn't really add any value if the traffic they would get from it is sort of irrelevant in that sense they're probably going to just reject it or ignore you. It needs to be one that really hits home with them. Like, you know, you should, your, your email, your goal there is to get them to subconsciously say, whoa, I didn't even know that we, we weren't targeting that, right? Like this is some, some sort of gap that we need to fill ASAP. You want to create sort of that, that, that urgency in the process there with the pitch that you're using. So I think taking your time in the research process to really understand the business that you're reaching out to, their model, how they work, how acquisition works for them. Those sorts of things will just lend you to to having really a better chance of succeeding with some of that cold outreach. Love that. Cold outreach, the land of forgotten toys. Um, cool, cool. You got me. You got me excited. If I want the short term wins on SEO, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go the backlink route. Um, but it sounds like we'll, we'll get a little bit more into this in what you you guys do but it sounds like you'd probably need a partner to help you out with this if you're first getting into it for sure yeah yeah i would definitely recommend if you're kind of first jumping into it you know bringing someone in from the outside the time to results is just going to be far higher than kind of winging it and kind of hoping you can run with the process and you're probably juggling some other step too so if you have the time you have the budget you have the goals of a you know a focus on seo and making that a primary driver of uh, acquisition for you 
I think it's kind of an open next step. Love that. Sick. Sick. Well, dude, where do you where do you learn all these things? Do you have any favorite podcasts or favorite books you've been reading lately? Yeah, it's a good question. So in terms of podcasts, uh, I've been liking, uh, you know, Voices of Search is a really good one. If you're looking to focus on kind What's of that SEO, uh, Voices of Search. Uh, it's really good. Nice. That one's great. If you're looking to kind of, you know, learn more about SEO or anything around that space and search as a whole, really good one to check out there. I think from a generalized kind of standpoint too on books, I tend to focus my book reading a little more on like you know, building relationships as a whole, as I've just found that that's kind of inter intertwined into realistically everything that we do, whether it's SEO or generalized marketing, sales, whatever you're in, and you're listening to this, you know, building those relationships for the long term realistically sets you up for success in pretty much anything you do. So a lot of the books I read tend to be about like interpersonal dynamics, things like that. So a good one that, you know, probably a good deal of people have heard of is how to win friends and influence people. Really good one is like a base sort of foundation if you're kind of just getting into business books. That's one that you could read, you know, that, that could be the only book that you read and you would have really good success with it. Um, there's another good one called High Output Management. Um, it's, a, it's a really good one that's a little more broad, speaking towards like how do you manage people, relationships, how do you uh, manage structures within the company to grow. So I think those two are like ones that. that I'd highly recommend. And then, yeah, Voices of Search, if you're in the SEO space or you're looking to learn more, always good and, and some really good people on there as well. I think I need to pick that book up. Uh, crazy, crazy. Jeremy, who are you? Who are you? Can you take me back in time? Little you days. Did you know you're going to be, you know, launching companies, selling companies, uh, helping people with SEO, marketing, all these things? Oh, man. No, not at all. No. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll take you a little bit back, I guess, uh, going towards, uh, you know, oh, take me way back, way take back, me way back. Okay. You want, want me to go further back? <laughs> Alrighty, let's do it. Let's see. So, yeah, I mean, growing up, no, I was, you know, always, I've always been, still am into the outdoors. So, love doing anything outside. I uh, never really pictured yeah. myself doing too much in the marketing space. There's always an interest in, like, specifically the advertising stuff, even from a really young age. Like, just always had kind of a fascination with commercials, how they worked, advertising as a whole, like, even anything from billboards to online stuff. So, yeah. that always intrigued me and was always in the back of my mind. So, I guess there was an inkling, you know, looking back in, in hindsight. There's probably a little bit of stuff that trends towards that. But at the time and growing up, you know, going to middle school, high school, never really thought of that as much as something I do. I kind of pictured myself doing something outdoors, like, you know, in marine biology or potentially in like agriculture or something like that, that really interested me uh, for a long while yeah. there. And then kind of got more into the tech scene as it came up in high school. You know, I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, so I'm, you know, directly surrounded by all that and, and it influenced a pretty heavily amount of my direction that I went to towards the end or towards now. Um, so, you know, that's uh, a little bit about the path and uh, where I'm at now, I guess. Yeah. So, I mean, talk about it. So usurp, right? So you guys do the, the link building, the SEO strategy. Yep. Yeah. So we started in uh, 2019 and I've uh, been kind of running ever since there. And, and now currently, I think we're at around like 50 plus or so people at this point and continuing to grow. So it's been a been a fun ride over the past few years or so at this point and uh yeah we get to work with some really cool companies around you know e-commerce and, and SaaS based companies like monday.com uh robin hood you know freshworks hot jar things like that so some pretty cool companies that we've got the chance to work with and uh yeah it's been it's been a fun journey so far one of the questions i was thinking of early on and i was dying to ask you and i think this is the right place as we're talking about you sir when you go to hire a team to do link building, to do SEO, there's so many idiots out there and like scamsters and all this. And obviously we've met, I like you, you're, you're giving us the truth here, but how do people shop? I mean, I mean, I guess the answer is just, just go work with you, but like, what are the things that they should be evaluating to avoid the hucksters and the scamsters to really get true SEO help? For sure. Yeah. Well, first, I appreciate the the plug there, Casey. Yeah. But uh, no, I, <laughs> in terms of, uh, you know, what people should do when they're kind of looking to hire someone, how to weed people out there, how to kind of suss out the situation. I think coming uh, with a little bit of a background there, doing some of your own research is key. So if you've got access to like a SEMrush or an Ahrefs, what I like to do there is even just plug in that site to those tools and just see, are they doing some of their own stuff that they preach? Are they practicing what they preach? Do they you know, eat their own dog food for a lack of a better phrase. What kind of stuff looks good on their site? What looks bad? 
This will give you a really good key indication, at least like a leading indicator there to say, okay, they do a little bit of what they're talking about. It doesn't have to be, you know, you know, it's a little different for agencies doing their own thing, but I think it gives you at least a good indication that they practice what they preach. And then when you're chatting with them too, just get a feel for, you know, any direct examples that you can garner from them. Uh, any client testimonials, case studies are going to be really great too to reference there. I think just coming prepared with some interesting questions about the process itself and trying to get them to open up a little bit of how do they go about doing SEO? What's their strategy or kind of guiding framework there? Uh, what kind of you know techniques or tactics do they use or do they not use? Really press them hard on some of those to understand, like, are they doing stuff by the book? Are they doing stuff that's a little you know, shady or a gray area? Those will depend on obviously, you know, your own situation and, and how uh, you want to take things there, things that are a little more, you know, in the gray area realm, if you're looking to go by the book. But those will give you some really good insights into understanding how that agency works. Uh, and then I'd also clarify too, like, who are you going to be working with on that team, right? Like, who on the agency itself are you going to be working with? How much experience do they have? Where do they come from? Or what's their background? I think that's really key and, and it's something that, uh, you know, at least for us has been a real differentiator in that sense where, you know, a lot of agencies tend to be, you speak to someone and it all sounds real great. And then they pass you on to like a junior level account manager and you never hear from that original person again. Whereas, you know, with us, we've kind of flipped the model on its head because we just noticed that there was a gap there, right? And we, we want to put people on, on the team and in place with you that are working with, uh, with us that are going to be folks that have real experience and are going to be working on your account directly. And so that means... Yeah, you know, it's going to be a little more expensive, but we're doing things the right way with people that know what they're doing. And so I think going into that, you know, ask some of those questions, see who you're going to work with, what that team looks like. And it'll give you a really clear indication of probably the quality and success that you're going to find in that campaign. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot because you, you opened this Pandora's box <laughs> for me. Uh, what is the one question you can ask an SEO agency to know if they're telling the truth? And what is the answer you're looking for? Yeah, man, that's a really good question. I'd say one of the biggest things you can ask is just what is the expected results within our time frame? I think it will tell you a lot about the potential agency that you're working with there in the sense that uh, usually if folks are saying everything's going to be bright and peachy and oh, yeah, you know, we're going to get you guys number one here within that three, six month period. I'd be really hesitant to ever say that to anyone on the call that we're going to get you in a number one, two, three position. There's just a lot of factors that go into it and and being conservative on your estimates is really key in SEO because things do shift, right? And it's not, uh, you know, it also depends on other marketing that you're doing. So I think when you're asking that question, just ask, you know, flat out, you know, based on our budgets, based on your guys' experience and our kind of industry and niche here, what kind of results can we expect in that first six month period? Uh, get their statements there and you want to see, you want to look for things that are a bit on the conservative end. So if they say things that are not going to wow you, that's actually a good thing. You don't want to hear from those agencies or see in a deck saying, cool, in six months, you're going to have 10 million visits to the site. Your company is going to blow up. It's going to, you know, do amazing things. That's usually not what you want to see. You want to see someone that's a little more conservative in that approach who says, based on your industry competition, you know, I think there's potential here. I don't think there's potential on this side of things or maybe these keywords you probably shouldn't focus on just yet. You want someone who's going to be a little analytical there and prioritize based on sort of your goals there and lay out that kind of roadmap for you. Love that. Any trick questions? Anything Anything you're, you could give us that's like the ace, ace up the sleeve? Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good question. Nothing off the top of my head for that. I'd say probably okay. the, the main thing there would be around, you know, what do they determine a successful SEO campaign? I think really kind of beats, beats the bottom of it, so to speak, of like, you know, whatever they determine success should align with sort of those goals, KPIs that you shared with them versus ones that they yeah. consider a success that are, you know, might be more vanity metric based, might be uh, ones that don't directly align with your goals. I think that can really give you a clear understanding of are they listening to my actual concerns, my goals for this campaign together, or are they just kind of going along with their own thing? Uh, that'll really help you understand if they're aligned with, with your own direction there. Cool. I like that, man. Uh, well, I have a bit of a hypothetical question for you. Yeah. You see, I may or may not have a time machine here in New Hampshire. Okay, nice. So let's see. Come visit. We get some lobster, we get some <laughs> beer, and we get a chance to use the time machine. Love it. It's in the backyard covered in a tarp. Nice, you know? nice, so yeah. we go brush off the acorns and everything, and 
and we, we use this time machine, but it's a special time machine and you get to go chat with yourself and you get, you get to meet yourself. Um, Little you, not not all the way back to the little days, yeah, but yeah. like a few days after getting that, you know, graduating with an undergrad, right? Whether it's the you know, Spanish or whether it was the, you know, like you just graduated and you get to talk to yourself. What kind of advice would you give yourself? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think, uh, you know, the number one piece of advice that's kind of stuck with me over the years, something that I've thought about a little bit more recently is uh, not being afraid to do stuff that other people think is weird. Um, and so usually when you're doing stuff that other people are criticizing or they think it's weird or they have some sort of opinion about it, it usually means you're on a good direction or a good path to creating something that's really unique and something that's kind of groundbreaking in your space. And so one of these examples that sticks to mind was, uh, you know, back in the high school days, uh, this is before like, so, you know, with all the gaming craze these days, right, with Twitch TV, all these things are, are blowing up. Yeah. People are making massive careers on stuff like this. Uh, back in my high school days, a lot of that was just getting started back when it was, uh, you know, called Justin TV for named after the founder of Twitch, Justin Khan. This was like the really, really early days of that whole kind of gaming sphere. People thought it was still weird or you were a nerd if you played games. Now it's like super cool and all the celebrities play it and you know, sports and rappers and artists all, all play games and stream on Twitch, things like that. But in those days, I started, uh, you know, I got super into video games in high school, like probably a lot of people. Um, growing up and uh, started kind of, you know, looking into that side of the business as a whole and recording some of the stuff I was doing. I actually started working with um, Machinima, which is now defunct, but they were at the time, like, I think maybe the seventh or sixth largest YouTube channel at the time. And so, uh, you know, millions of subscribers, things like that. So started working with them, uh, creating, you know, video game based streaming content. And so this was before all that was cool or like, socially acceptable, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I think yeah, my, totally. my biggest advice to people is just keep doing stuff that uh, people think is weird because if they think it's weird at the time, chances are it's probably going to get bigger over time and it's just kind of a new industry or a new space that people just haven't heard of too much yet. And lo and behold, that space as a whole is kind of blown up. I've since long transitioned out of that area. Um, but, you know, you know, if I hadn't, maybe things would have gone a different path, but it's always uh, cool to think about. Yeah. Wow. Just go for it, man. Go for it. You know, it's like, it, just like with being afraid of other people or what they're thinking, it's like whenever something I hear is like, someone says, oh, that's cliche. I realize, you know what? That's, that's probably true. It's probably like yeah. super, super true. And we just take it for granted. So totally. that's great encouragement. Yeah. Sick, man. Well, hey, if people want to reach out and connect with you or they want to connect uh, on Usurp, where do you want them to go? Yeah, absolutely. You guys can just check out our site. It's usurp.io. Uh, it's the U-S-E-R-P.io. Okay. And you can also check me out on LinkedIn, Twitter. Feel free to reach out, uh, send me a message, and now we'll connect. So good, man. And, you know, I'm, I'm, ex I'm happy. I'm happy to have a chat with you today. I feel like I've got uh, – someone I can trust in the SEO world. And it's such a rare thing. So for those listening, if you're working with some sketchy SEO group, <laughs> please, for the love of God, stop because you're probably walking yourself into being penalized. I literally have seen people get blocked off of Google <laughs> for nefarious things. For sure. So please drop these crazy people you're working with like a rock. Go work with Jeremy, work with you, sir. Um, get some real results in there and uh, restore my faith in seo uh jeremy thank you again man for coming on here yeah i appreciate it casey thanks for having me all right everyone if you've learned something and i freaking know you have because i i have two pages of notes over here front and back <laughs> then share this with someone else be a thought leader one person three people nine thousand people doesn't even matter that's what it takes do that share the episode with that this has been another crazy episode of the hardcore marketing show we will see you all next time